Just because something is weird or frowned upon doesn't necessarily mean it's illegal. And you'd be surprised by some of the stuff you can do before the police will want to get involved. Here are 10 crazy things you thought would break the law, but are in fact completely legal. Amazing. Number 10, marrying your cousin. A century ago, it's estimated that 80% of marriages in the Western world were among first and second cousins, but that's hardly surprising. In a time where people hardly ventured from their home villages, your dating pool was smaller too. Yep, in a world with no dating apps, marrying someone from a different branch of the same family tree just seemed to be the practical thing to do. It was only during the second half of the 19th century that cousin marriages became increasingly taboo, and many states in America began banning the custom. Even so, today, first cousin marriages are still allowed without restrictions in 20 states. Meanwhile, in the UK, it was never outlawed, since cousin marriages were associated with aristocracy in Europe. In some Eastern cultures, marrying among relatives is not only legal, but still widely accepted and practiced. Still, you would have a hard time finding someone who thinks marrying your cousin is a good idea. The reason for this has to do with the conventional wisdom that procreating within the same gene pool will result in offspring with birth defects. In actual fact, first cousins share only 12.5% of DNA, which is very little compared to the 50% shared by members of the immediate family. What that means is there's only 4 to 7% chance of children born to first cousins suffering from birth defects. That's not much, considering the risk for those who are more distantly related is 3 to 4%, and the odds decrease with distance. Real issues would only arise if subsequent generations continue to marry their first cousins, producing offspring with more and more common genetic material. So if you happen to like one of your cousins, go ahead and have kids with them. As long as they like you too, of course. Charles Darwin, Edgar Allan Poe, Albert Einstein, and many members of British and European royalty have done so. But even with genetic issues out of the way, it's worth bearing in mind that in cases of cousin marriages, you can't divorce the whole family if things don't work out. Number 9. Owning a Tank Imagine having a fully operational military-grade tank parked in your garage, which you could take out for a joyride around the neighborhood. For about the price of a normal car, you can buy a tank online and operate it on private and public property in all 50 states of the US, provided you don't try and overthrow the government. Tank ownership actually falls under the American Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. Written in the 1700s, the law allows for citizens to carry rifles to defend the nation from the British. A few centuries later, it appears that technology has changed, but the law has stayed the same. It's also legal to own and operate ones in other countries, like the UK, too. All you need is a full driver's license, and you can get a provisional license to drive a tank with someone fully qualified to drive it. That said, if you've got the money and the garage space to spare, you'd be better off getting a sports car. Not only will you have a swanky ride, but you won't end up on a government watch list. Number 8. Owning Flamethrowers you would think there are strict regulations to owning a device that can shoot flames long distances, but it turns out there are no federal laws or restrictions whatsoever to owning a flamethrower in the United States. This is because, despite their capabilities, flamethrowers are considered tools and not firearms. In fact, there's some sense to this, and there are many peaceful uses for a flamethrower, such as incinerating weeds and insect hives on farmland melting away snow and ice on the ground, or making pyrotechnic special effects for your amateur film project. Fire departments have long used flamethrowers in their firefighting training, too. Getting your hands on one is no hassle at all. You can buy a flamethrower online, with some dealers even offering napalm upgrades. And with Elon Musk's boring company entering the market with their own original design, which they insist isn't actually a flamethrower, maybe some flamethrowers are about to become fashionable? Just, uh, just be careful with it, okay? Number 7. Faking Your Own Death Ever wish you could just disappear and run off to some faraway land where no one knows your name? Ever wanted to reinvent yourself and start your life anew? Here's the good news, faking your death is technically legal, but as enticing as the idea may be, it comes with a big caveat. Whilst there are no laws preventing you from faking your death, there are strict rules against fraud, 
which you're almost guaranteed to commit if you pretend to die. That means you can't fake your death for insurance claims, to escape any legal or financial obligations you have, to dodge a criminal conviction, or assume a new identity. All of which you would have ended up doing eventually just by playing dead. So instead of living carefree and glamorously over a new identity, faking your own death would result in a life constantly looking over your shoulder. Seems like coming up with an elaborate plan to fake your death is a better idea on paper than in real life. Who <laughs> would have thought it? Number 6. Corporal Punishments in Schools The Victorians used to say, spare the rod, spoil the child. And while modern child psychologists emphatically disagree with that, lawmakers in some parts of the US don't seem to take issue with schools using violent disciplinary methods. It wasn't until 1977 that corporal punishment was ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. And even then, only two states banned the practice in public schools. So from 2013 to 2014, studies reported that about 160,000 kids across America had been the recipients of corporal punishment, with boys, ethnic minorities, and children with disabilities filling up the statistics. Thankfully, as of 2016, corporal punishment in public schools is only legal in 19 states. Hopefully, this shocking statistic will continue to change, as studies have found that juvenile crime has not increased in states that have banned the practice. Number 5. Lying to the Police it's a crime to lie under oath and give false testimony in a court, but is lying to the cops always illegal? In the UK, it is not a criminal offense to lie to an officer of the law, as long as it's harmless and inconsequential. This means that if you're not the suspect, and what you're saying has no bearing on their investigation, the police can't pursue it. For example, telling a cop that you witnessed a robbery on your way to the library, when you really witnessed it on your way to the sexual health clinic opposite the library, is not punishable by law. The moment your lie impacts their investigation or wastes their time, it's illegal. So you can't lie your way out of an arrest, to cover up a crime, or just make hoax reports for fun. So you might want to think twice about telling a tall tale the next time you get pulled over by an officer. Remember, whatever the law might say, honesty is the best policy. Number 4. Underage Drinking There are plenty of reasons alcohol consumption comes with an age restriction, but it turns out you don't always have to wait until your 21st birthday to get sloshed. In the UK, the law only forbids minors from being served alcohol in public places such as restaurants, bars, and pubs. There are no laws preventing parents from boozing with their not-yet-adult kids in the privacy of their own home. Even in the US, where it is mostly illegal to give alcohol to a minor, there are still some loopholes. For instance, kids can have a sip if alcohol is part of a religious rite, or under certain exceptional circumstances where the folks give them permission, provided, of course, the booze is served without intention or effect of causing harm. So I guess you could just create your own religion and give it a go. But as with all these legal loopholes, just because something's legal doesn't mean you should do it. And you should definitely steer clear of drinking sessions with young children. The law's there for a reason, you know? Number three, Firing Missiles If you think being able to legally own a flamethrower or a tank in the US is a good example of America's lenient gun laws, well, that's nothing compared to being legally able to fire a missile. Yep, you heard that right. In the state of South Carolina, under Section 233320 of the State Code of Laws, you can get a permit to do just that. But what happens if you were to launch one without permit? Surely being irresponsible with such a dangerous weapon would carry a serious penalty. Nope. It turns out you only get a slap on the wrist with a fine of less than $100. Like most of USA's gun laws, this has its origins in the Constitution, drawn up at a time where American settlers were in a state of war with the British. So whilst I can see how this law came about, you think it would have been updated by now. Number two, bestiality. America has some complicated laws, and this is no more obvious than when it comes to one of the biggest social taboos, bestiality. Shockingly, getting down and dirty with a four-legged friend is not illegal under federal law, and any regulations or restrictions are largely a matter for individual states. While most states have passed laws addressing this horrendous practice, there's a surprising number of states where it remains completely legal. And if that's not strange enough, there are some strict rules being imposed on homosexuality in some states where bestiality is legal. 
In the state of Texas, for example, it's legal to have sex with an animal, but not someone of the same gender. Although in 2003, the Supreme Court ruled that Texas anti-gay laws was unconstitutional and therefore unenforceable, the ban on same-sex affection is still on the state law books. As for sexual relations with animals, that's always been legal in Texas. And with no intervention from central government, it doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. The good news is that as of early 2018, 45 states have put a ban on it. Let's just hope the rest follow suit soon. And number one, cannibalism. If you find yourself stranded on a desert island and after resort to killing someone for nourishment, you will be prosecuted for murder once you make it back to civilization. But what if someone were to willingly offer you an arm and a leg to be eaten? In that case, you are free to do so without repercussion, except maybe from your own conscience. Because as appalling as cannibalism may be, there is nothing in the law of the United States that forbids you from eating human flesh or organs, so long as the human parts in question were obtained in a way that did not endanger or cause harm to the human they were taken from. Now, you may be feeling a tad nauseous at the thought of ingesting something from the body of another human being, thinking you'd rather starve to death first. But then again, you don't need to go full-on Hannibal Lecter to partake in cannibalism. There's a fairly new trend of mothers eating the placenta after the child is born, as it's thought to combat postpartum depression and improve breast milk production. Celebrities like Kim Kardashian have jumped on the bandwagon, getting specialists to dry out their placentas and turn them into pills, which are then taken as supplements in the days and weeks after childbirth. It's a trend that's never quite caught on though. And doctors say there's no hard evidence to say it's either good or bad. I think most people would agree it's pretty gross though. So are you tempted to make the most of any of these loopholes? Or do you think lawmakers should hurry up and shut this all down? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.